What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Southern Crown Tech. And today I want to talk about something that I always get excited about and can always support is when consumers speak out against certain decisions from their favorite companies. And with this certain example is going to be with Apple. Now back at WWDC 2022, Apple unveiled iPad OS 16. And with this new operating system came a very big feature called Stage Manager. Now Stage Manager was pretty much gonna be the remix or the upgrade to Apple's current multitasking system on the iPad. And you would essentially be able to treat your iPad like a laptop and having multiple windows open specifically for on device so on the ipad and then if you were hooking the ipad up to an external monitor another four so giving you a total of eight but with this unveil of this feature came some very bad news that a lot of consumers were not feeling and that was that stage manager was going to be exclusive to m1 ipads now at this time, there's only a handful of M1 iPads when you look at pretty much all of the iPads that are in the wild. You have the iPad Pros and the iPad Air that are sporting that M1 chip. So a lot of consumers that recently bought iPads within the last couple of years are essentially being left out on a feature that looks very useful and very cool. So they weren't feeling that and they let that be known to Apple through a lot of forums, social media, and just about any platform that Apple can hear their voice with that decision. Now, something that doesn't normally happen, especially with a big company like Apple, they kind of heard those shouts and cries about excluding iPads from this feature, and they listen. Now, one of the biggest things are side eyes that were drawn to Apple over this decision is that the previous generation iPad Pros were also excluded from Stage Manager. So that's the iPad Pros with the A12X Bionic and the A12Z Bionic. And these iPads were used to transition Apple uh, to Apple Silicon on the Max. And they were capable enough to run Mac OS, but they're not capable enough to run Stage Manager. So that left a lot of head scratches. But like I said, today Apple has delivered. And if you have those iPads that have the A12X and the A12Z, in the latest beta of iPad OS 16, Apple has released Stage Manager on those iPads. Now, the only knock about this stage manager is I previously mentioned the support for external displays. It will not have that. So you'll only be able to use our multitask with the four apps on the iPad, but not on any external display getting those four additional apps. Me personally, I don't hook my iPad up to an external monitor, so I won't be missing that. But being able to use Stage Manager because I have the iPad OS 16 beta has been something that I'm glad this decision was made because Stage Manager is definitely a neat feature and it's a huge upgrade to the multitasking system on the iPad. Now, as I mentioned with those four apps you have on the screen, First of all, it seems to work with any app on the iPad. Now, once you have the ability to have Stage Manager on the iPad, you can go on the iPad or the settings of the iPad and just simply toggle it on. And then you get some additional features of keeping the dock, so the normal iPad dock on the screen when you're using Stage Manager and some other features as well that you can customize. Now, speaking of customization, when you do have those apps on the screen with Stage Manager, 
enabled, you can resize those apps just like you would do on a traditional PC or Mac OS experience. And a lot of people thought Stage Manager would be a gimmick, but you do have control over those sizes and pretty much pairing any apps together and you can get creative with it. So if you're trying to go for a specific flow in whatever session you're using the iPad for, so let's just say you're working on a school or a work project and you want to research, you can have your notes app open, you can have Safari open, you can maybe have YouTube open for some research, as well as FaceTime if you're collaborating with someone else. So having these four apps open and popping in and out of these apps, being able to use your Apple Pencil for the notes or Safari for that matter, as well as still having the YouTube videos and everything running, just leads for a cleaner multitasking experience on the iPad, as well as a quicker way. Now, previous to Stage Manager, the iPad has had split screen for a while. So having those apps side by side on the iPad, I've always loved that as well as the kind of the Passover app where you have the app in the column form and you can kind of move it across to either side of the screen. Now I've been using Stage Manager for about two and a half, three weeks now, and I have not turned it off the iPad. Now with this being a beta, and especially being a beta on a machine that it technically wasn't supposed to be on, it was kind of sort of rough in the beginning, specifically with apps and using the Apple Pencil. Now, I'm a huge advocate of the Apple Pencil. I like to write with Apple Pencil and notes and pretty much a lot of text fields on other apps. So when I first downloaded the new beta and started using the stage manager, that was a pretty big struggle in using the Apple Pencil. Now I must say today, two and a half to three weeks later, it's gotten a whole lot better. So. I encourage all of you that have iPads that are capable of running Stage Manager to use it and tell me what you think. And if you're not a huge advocate and downloading the betas, the good news is iPad OS 16 should be coming out in the next week or two, definitely before October ends, so you'll be able to use it there. So let me know what you think about Stage Manager. Do you think it's a gimmick? Is it worth it? Was it worth the huge loud cry from the consumers to get it on essentially two other chipsets of iPads? Let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, be easy and peace.